Here we go again. This particular feature to me is not about a particular filter or set. It's about the interface, and to me it's about efficiency. So I consider this one of the 10. It's about adjustments and about masks. If I pull this out, let me go ahead and pull this out for you. Notice there's not much there. Previous versions of the program had the adjustment as part of the adjustments panel, and now it's just got the buttons. But watch what happens. This might surprise you. So when I go in and select an adjustment, the adjustment now appears in the properties panel as opposed to over here in the adjustments. And if that were all, that would be okay, because I like the separation in the organization. But you get one more thing here. You get to control your masks masks and adjustments in the same panel. Now I use over the course of a day on one image a lot of masks and a lot of adjustments. Having one single area to work on adjustments and masks to me is cool enough to be included in these 10. As I've said before, I'm not really a big fan of auto anything, especially when it gets into controlling images, I would prefer going into levels and, of course, curves to do a lot of the work that I need to get done. And in past times, I would have never recommended using brightness and contrast on an image. But it now has an auto feature, and let's just say you're pressed for time. So let's do this. Let's come into our adjustments, and here it is right there. Or you could come down to the half moon icon way down here. And I'm going to click it right here. It opens up brightness and contrast in properties, which I like. And there's the button. There's no other thing you do. You just click the button. Now watch the image. Now the cool thing about this is that in previous versions that had auto buttons, it didn't tell you what it did. It just did it. Notice the sliders have changed. If we don't like exactly what it did, we can begin moving the sliders and getting what we consider to be a better image. So I hate to admit this, but the auto button in Brightness and Contrast is pretty cool. You know, it might seem funny to people who are not professional photographers. They think we spend our entire lives trying to get everything sharply focused, that we would have a lot of filters on blurring. But blurring is, to me, just as much a part of photography as anything else. And one of the things I want to show you here is under the word filter, under the word blur, we actually have three of them now. They're new. Field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. Let's look at iris blur. First thing you're going to notice is an oval. This is the default. You have some points that you can adjust and change. You can also come in here and click and move where you want this to be. That's your cone of focus. If I come here, instead of coming over here and changing the blur, I can actually come into here and do it interactively right now. This button here controls how far in the blur goes or how far out. And of course we can move it, we can change it, we can do just anything we want. We'll spend a little bit more time here obviously in the lessons, but this is one of my little fab features too. Iris Blur. My next pick here for a little demo might surprise you. It actually surprised me when I saw it being inserted into Photoshop 6 until I realized its value to me. That's character and paragraph styles. Now we all use type in this program. We don't write a book in this program, but we do use type. For example, let me come over here and pick up the type tool. And I'll click somewhere on the screen here. Let me go ahead and begin or commence to typing, which is not my strong suit. All right, that's a bit small. And I don't really like the font, so I'm going to press Control A. I'm going to come up here. This isn't new. I'm going to go into something like maybe OCR. Let's see what that does for us. And let's make it bigger. Andy Anderson at Real Andy. And I do need to add at the end of that, I suppose, dot C O M. And I can pick up my move tool now, position it here. Maybe I'm going to do a copyright, whatever it is. Now, I made some changes to this. The yellow is not default. It's just the last color I used. Well, let's say I like that. If I didn't, I would have had to have changed that. So maybe the color, the font, the size, all these kind of things. If I come back tomorrow and change it, 
and come back again and change it. And maybe I'm looking for consistency to my copyrights. Well, that's what paragraph and character styles are for. So we're going to go up to the word window real quick here. I only use, well, I would say most of the time I use paragraph styles for both character and paragraph. Because when you choose paragraph styles, basically what you're doing is you're choosing and changing an entire paragraph, not just a word. And if I go in here, we have one basic paragraph style. The little plus sign means that I've changed it. But I want to do this. I'm going to pick up my type tool. And let's go ahead and select this. And then come here and click the new button. There's our new paragraph style based on this. Go ahead and double click. See, everything's there. All you got to do is give it a name. Click OK. There you go. You can have as many of these as you want, and we will do more with them in this course. But character and paragraph styles, a surprising addition to Photoshop, but a valuable one. The last feature that we're going to look at is something called Perspective Crop Tool. Now, we've been cropping perspectively in Photoshop for years, but this one tool kind of brings everything together for us and makes the job a lot easier. So this photograph of the barn basically was shot from a valley looking up, and it has this two-dimensional aspect of it that looks like it's kind of falling or leaning over. In reality, it isn't. That's just how we see things two-dimensionally. I want to correct that. So we're going to come over here and pick up in the Crop Tool area the Perspective Crop Tool. New. Make a sweep and select the whole thing. Top left to bottom right. Now you get a grid. That's a good thing. What we have to do is align this up to the angles of the barn. Or let's put it this way, to what we want to straighten. So this I find easier, especially when I'm really far away like this. I'm going to bring that in like this. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to see if I can line that up. It's got to be precise because it's relying on you to get the angle. That looks pretty good. Let's bring it back this way. Don't go too far this way. You want to stay in the image on the bottom, obviously. And let's do the same thing over here. Let's bring that over so we can see it. And let's see if we can line that up precisely. That doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Actually, a little bit more, I think. There, let's stop there before I get into trouble. Let's take that back again to here. Now, that's basically all. Let's see if it works. Double click. There you go. With one fell swoop of the perspective cropping tool, we've aligned and straightened out, at least in terms of what our eyes see on a two dimensional space, the barn. In closing, let me remind you I'm not giving you what I think are the 10 best. Because that's going to be different out of 65 for you and your workflow. I just think they're 10 that are kind of curious and actually very powerful. On to the next.